That was so good. Sup fellow nerds and welcome to Not Your Status Quo's Spider-Man Far From Home spoiler filled review. <laughs> If you like what you see here, make sure that you uh, like it. Make sure that you uh, subscribe to the channel if you are not already. And ring the bell so you're notified of future videos. And remember to tell your friends. So Far From Home begins with a home video celebrating the fallen heroes from Endgame. I absolutely love this. I thought it was great. It just, it seemed exactly like something that a bunch of high school students would have put together. Something you might see on Twitter, Instagram, just a bunch of um, horribly edited and cut, probably more Comic Sans text or something. <laughs> and the two actors in that scene did such a good job of acting like they're weird on camera. Yes. Because they were like, oh, good one. And their enthusiasm. Is, yeah. Yay, Avengers. It's like our early videos, when you can yeah. tell we're reading directly from a script. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think this movie was... Oh, hey. <laughs> I loved every minute. No. Uh, you know, and then they start, they talk about what we all knew they would, the snap. And then they, what they refer to as the blip. The blip. I like this new name. That was a, that was a cool um, addition. I like uh, the snapping. Snapping is fun, yeah. I do like the snapping. Um, but uh, the blip isn't that the uh, the term they're giving for the return of everybody? Yes. Okay. The, and I think the people who are were gone, so they blipped out for five years. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. And it was nice seeing that come into play young. when yes. Flash is drinking, and MJ oh, says, that was "Great, hey, oh my god, he's not twenty one. He was blipped or whatever." Yeah. And he's like, "Oh, I'm mad at her." Gonna get you for that. <laughs> oh. Uh, okay, so real quick before we uh, we dive in deeper, Flash, uh, oh my god, he was so good in Homecoming, excellent in Far From Home. God, just, the, this is a good Flash. I What's like what? <laughs> his, his Instagram, the Flash Mob? Yes. That was awesome. Saved his life. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, it absolutely yeah, it did. Yeah, it did. Okay. And then, you know, the, the kids get ready to head to Europe because it's the end of the school year, and of course we get, you know, J.B. Smooth as one of the teachers who, science teacher and everything was witches, which was everything. <laughs> let see. Oh, I love that, I love that line. Uh, well, as a scientist, it's definitely witches. <laughs> <laughs> now, th this was just for the blips, right? This trip? No, it was for everybody. No, it, remember oh, that's one right, that's right. What's his name? Who was hitting on MJ. Jeremy or something like that? King whatever Jeremy, yeah, whatever. Yeah, it doesn't matter, he's not important. He was <laughs> exposed, not Re literally. Re rest in peace, Jeremy, or James, or Frank, whatever. Aaron. Sure. Who knows what his name is. But then we find out, much like we saw in the trailer, his summer vacation Europe trip is getting hijacked by Nick Fury. And I loved how every time he would be like, I can't do it. We're going here next. I can't go with you. I'll be exposed. And all of a sudden, uh, oh, we're going. <laughs> hey, we got a call from the company. We got upgraded. We're going to, we're going to Berlin. Or it was perfect Fury being Fury. So I got to ask it? you guys about that. Okay. Who, who, went, who, what happened first? Did Mysterio just happen to be in Italy, or did Peter's class get sent to Italy because of Nick Fury? I think uh, the option B there. I think Fury controlled it all. You think so? Yep. Because yeah, it, it did seem like uh, it did seem like they were controlling every single aspect of where they went, including um, you know in the end when they ended up going to Prague. So uh, that could very well be. But I was wondering about that because it seemed awful convenient that. Um, you know, that Mysterio was, uh, uh, you know, just suddenly there. Now, um, okay, the reason why I bring that up, um, in case you did not happen to see the video, uh, in case you didn't happen to see the uh, the um, the title of this video before you clicked on it, this is all spoilers, every bit of this. If uh, if you don't have, if you haven't seen the movie, turn back now, go watch your theories video instead. But Then watch the movie, then come back and watch this video again. Absolutely. So, obviously, Mysterio is a bad guy. Okay, I most of us except for me, um, I hate to admit that we're uh, completely right about that. Now, He's definitely the bad guy. Now, do you think that Fury did it, kind of hijacked this whole thing and got their trip going to get Peter Parker there because mm. he suspected Mysterio and he needed Spider-Man's help to out? No, him. I think I he don't. was in touch with uh, Mysterio already, just because yes. when he introduced I, I him as Spider-Man. I agree with that. I think Mysterio because he he had this whole elaborate. Uh, plot that he had set up where he's saying I, I have a way to tell where these elementals are going to be next and I think he might have told Fury 
that they had to go to Italy because if you if you think about it, his entire mission at this point is to get the glasses that Tony Stark left for Spider-Man. Okay, so um, that is the driving force of basically this entire movie is you've got Tony Stark basically bequeathing the Avengers and Iron Man onto Spider-Man. Everybody's got all of these uh, expectations of him that this is what he's supposed to be. He's supposed to be a representative of the Avengers. He's supposed to take over for Tony Stark. He does not want to do that. I don't think and, he and left it, it for him to, to do. I think, it, like he said in the movie, I think he left him to pick who they go to. You know, out of out of he's the he thinks all right. He's the young one. He's the pure one. He can still see what's what's up, what's good and bad. He'll know who to give these to. That's what I I agree with the, what they said in the movie. Okay. Yeah, I think he just did it because he liked Peter Parker. He thought of him as a son and his, you know, thing. And he really wanted him to have this to help him out. He knew Peter was a smart guy. And he knew he would be able to benefit from him more. So he was more of a scientist and a younger scientist than, yeah. you know, any, any of the other heroes. So I think, you know, Iron Man was like, you know, Peter needs to have these. He's going to help shape things to come. Still a, w a little weird to leave an entire space arsenal to a teenager. Especially when he uh, <laughs> tries to target his friend with some drone strikes. Right, exactly. Hey, he's, um, been a, he's been to space. With, with great power comes great murdering well, your friends. Well, <laughs> and the thing is, and I think... Jeremy or this, James or whatever his name This movie Rest did a peace. great job of showing with great power comes great responsibility yeah. without shoving it down your throat. They didn't say it every five minutes, but it was such a theme of the movie of Peter learning. He wants to be a kid. Yeah. He does. And he learns that he can't be at this point. I think at the end of this movie, he realized he can no longer just be a teenage kid. He is Spider-Man. And that's going to have an impact on the rest of his life. And the he, future Spider-Man. He definitely was trying to, to shirk his duties. I mean, on one hand, I did get it. You know, he just came back. He just fought this ultimate battle uh, with the other Avengers against Thanos. He's tired. He's stressed out. He just wants to be a teenager. As he said, he's got this plan he wants to tell mj how he feels and that's that's all he wants to do he just wants to be a kid he doesn't even want to be the friendly neighborhood spider-man he wants to just be a teenager and so he's looking for every opportunity including uh ghosting nick fury he's not answering his phone calls you don't ghost nick fury <laughs> and he's always wanted to be an avenger and so you know it's really changed his perspective absolutely you know yeah saying. yeah and by the way her name is mj but it's not mary jane no it's michelle michelle jones yep so, you know, we still could have another MJ. You know, the, they leave it open for things like they that. They do, which the MCU the always does. You know, they always yeah. leave things open. Like, we still don't know who hired the guy in Ant-Man and the Wasp. We still don't know who bought Avengers Tower and is repurposing it. But there is a shot in the movie that we can talk about a little later that I think is yeah, almost a clue, but up. may not be. But getting back to the actual plot of this movie, we kind of got sidetracked there, but it was a great sidetrack. Uh, you know, Spider-Man starts working with Quentin to stop these elementals, which I thought, when he finally reveals himself as being the villain, mm -hmm. and he's like, oh, that was so perfect, having her go to these spots and setting off the electromagnet wave so it would register on the shield thing, you know, they really covered almost every aspect of how they could do this. You know, the drones along with the illusion that caused all the damage. Yes. They so really did a great job of this updating is a, Mysterio. This was a perfect mix of both uh, visual effects and practical effects, which that's something that Mysterio has always done, but in the world of the comic books and the, the cartoons, it's always been kind of ambiguous exactly how he pulls off all of his stunts. They just kind of push it all, all under this umbrella. Well, he used to be a special effects artist. Now they actually go to good lengths in this movie. I love how they did it. I thought it was great. They explain every aspect of it. It was a bit of a plot dump, but I appreciate it. I really like that. I really think that Mysterio thought he was going to be the next. He was going to fill the spot of Iron Man. You know, he used to work for Tony Stark, and he and he uh, and, you know now he can fly. And, you know, and, and he actually whatever. he actually created the barf technology. The barf technology. Yeah. Yes. I created this, and he used it, and, and he, he called, called it barf. barf. <laughs> <laughs> right. Great. And he great. stepped in, and he wanted to be. He wanted to be just like Tony. Did he? Did he literally want to be a superhero? Or was he only doing that he to get the, the recognition? Glasses? He wanted the recognition and the fame, but he knew he wasn't a superhero because he was in the suit. Yeah. I mean, when we finally see yeah. what he's really doing while Mysterio's flying around. He's in a mocap around. suit. Well, yeah. if he can fool enough people, yeah. that's what he wanted. He wanted to, that's what I think anyway. Yeah. But you variety. think he would have to know that he would be exposed when a real threat presents itself. And they're like, Mysterio, uh, Ultron's back. And he's like, 
Huh? See you guys. <laughs> Get him, guys. <laughs> Yeah, that, that kind of makes me wonder what, what his next plan was. Like, if he had thought that far ahead. Like, he, he gets he gets the glasses. He's got all of this power now. He's able to upgrade all of his tech. Um, but, like, what was he going to do next? I mean, right. clearly he's a superhero fighting off his own creations. I want to sprinkle this in, too. Um, if you thought, like, when Mysterio was talking to Peter Parker, describing the elementals and all this other stuff, and there was a few, a little bit of it that Nick Fury didn't seem like he was up on until uh, he was told by Quentin. Um, it seemed a little bit off to you guys. Oh, yeah. definitely, yeah. absolutely. It did. Yeah, I want to just sprinkle that in so I don't forget to say something later. So yeah, no, um, we we noticed that uh, you know in the theater during the movie that Nick seemed off. Uh, I think you and I even discussed this. Yeah. Um, in the middle of the the film, sorry, fellow movie goer, goers, I am definitely a theater talker. <laughs> But yeah, no, he he was uh, he was definitely not your normal smart spy thinking five steps ahead, Nick Fury. Yeah, if he was the the super spy, he was he'd know about it. he wouldn't need that information told to him by Quentin. And he would have probably saw through Quentin back like that. Oh, instantly, yeah. And you so, see the way he was dressed too. I don't know if you noticed it, but it was a lot more loose than the normal uh, Nick Ca Nick Cage, <laughs> Nick Fury. Fury outfits. You know, it was. Didn't um, he have a bit of a pudge too? He did, and I I noticed that too, and I was like. Something is off. Something is off. I mean, he, wrong. he wasn't clearly as fit as I am. <laughs> Which, and we had talked about Nora. before we, we <laughs> before this video, how, like, I think everyone sitting through that movie is like, I thought, God damn, Sam Jackson is just phoning this one in. He's getting a paycheck and doesn't care. And then when you see that he's really Talos, you're like, damn, he really acted the shit out of this movie. Yeah, he Because did. he did. you re-see it and you know who he is and it is perfect and yeah. for those who don't uh remember who talos is go back and watch captain marvel uh he is one of the scrolls so you know and then you know in the movie i i think the only reason mysterio really gets found out is because spider-man got involved in that projector busted off when he was fighting it mm -hmm. and him and mj kind of find it yes it, otherwise that nick fury didn't pick it up he, it, and i think the real nick fury would have yes but, yeah and I think it leads into one of the best scenes. He knows he can't call Nick Fury. He's got to go to Berlin to let him know in person. Yep. And it's basically Mysterio waiting for him there. And he puts him in that sort of illusion. Yeah. And Spider-Man has to fight his way out. And one of the things that I noticed, and I don't know if you guys saw, uh, when the Iron Man corpse is coming at him. The zombie Iron Man? The zombie Iron Man. Yeah. Of, there's black widows crawling on him. Oh no, I didn't catch that. And it's Mysterio learned of he's such he's such a good con man. All these talks he had with Peter, he knew exactly what to send to Peter in these illusions of his to have the most biggest impact. Oh, okay. So this was so true to form. This was definitely Mysterio all the way. This is something that he's done in every iteration of uh, how he's appeared in the cartoons and the comics. He's always done something really trippy that totally throws off uh, Spider's. Um, well, Peter Tingle, I guess, in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> Don't call it the Peter Tingle. <laughs> but yeah, so um, that was really great. I loved that scene. It was awesome how he's got him going through tunnels. And, um, you know, it's you just see this giant uh, Mysterio and you see Spider-Man is trapped inside the crystal ball or whatever. It's, I mean, it was really good. And whoever did the visual effects for that, and applause for you. That was Absolutely. Amazing. And there was so many scenes right out of the comic books yes, with him absolutely. being trapped in the fishbowl, and they just did a tremendous job. And they I really seen. did. I, I can't wait to see it again because... I do want to jump back to something that you had oh, yeah. kind of mentioned real quick. So you, you talked about how Peter and Mary Jane kind of figured out the fact that this is all a projection. It wasn't actually, um, you know, the it's real It's not Mary Jane, by the way. It's just MJ. MJ. Yes, we went over you. this earlier. I forgot already. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Sorry. But, um, so what I like about that is I think this is kind of a nod. What what I feel like they've been doing is every now and again in the MCU, they kind of toss in a little uh, a sprinkle of something from the comics or something from the old uh, shows or something like that. And uh, I feel like, yeah, yeah, a little Easter egg. Little nod. And I feel like this MJ is very similar to the Ultimate Universe MJ, who is uh, a bit of a nerd sort of geek. And that's also how um, I believe in the spectacular spider-man uh, series wasn't she a bit of a, a nerd there too yeah. 
yeah, so I, it's kind of that version of, of an MJ. Now, this isn't obviously Mary Jane, but she's got a lot of those aspects, which is kind of cool. Just like how Ned in uh, in this movie is supposed to be like um, uh, Miles Morales' friend in the comic book series. He's basically like a version of that. Well, the thing is, too, that I keep looking for, Ned leaves in the comic books, becomes Hobgoblin. And I keep trying to look for any sort of hints that he's going to turn into that at some point. Obviously, Norman Osborn has to come. We need the Green Goblin first. But I didn't see anything. I don't know if you guys caught anything. People out there, send us, you know, put a comment in if you've seen anything. But I keep looking. Still nothing. I, I don't know. It's not a light now. switch, man. It's a journey to no, the dark side. I know, <laughs> but I want to see the hints now. Because when he becomes the Hobgoblin, there'll probably be hints in Homecoming, Far From Home, and Craven's Last Hunt, whatever the next movie's going to be where it's hinted at and I just want to catch them before they get to that this but. is already movie number two I mean um, how many how many solo movies do you know Marvel does trilogies but okay. it's also Spider-Man their most popular character they got a young kid who has said he will play Spider-Man into his 40s I'm down for that so I, I think he's going to be around for a lot more if he doesn't spoil every movie first that's right <laughs> <laughs> if he, if he, he may have a trilogy of trilogies okay which would be awesome because I think we're all Spider-Man be... fans here so oh, I definitely would not be oh, opposed know. to it <laughs> you know <laughs> sure okay <laughs> you know then we get to kind of the final battle London Bridge it's you know down. Happy it Hogan shows down. up yes it was <laughs> and uh basically we finally see Mysterio how he really is with what Doug said earlier, the mocap suit, very up to date, you know, leading the illusions around to fool everybody. And one of the things that I noticed, he, when they're fighting Spider-Man, they're shooting bullets at him, and then when they, when he figures out that the bullets aren't really working, he goes to Sonic Waves. And I mm. think those are the exact same drones and Sonic Waves they used on the Hulk in the Incredible Hulk movie way back nine days. years ago. Oh, and because they worked against that. the Hulk, and I saw that, and I'm like. Okay. God damn, they're still, you know, they're bringing things up, bringing it back from all those movies. They capitalize, and that's what's so great about the MCU. It's a serialized storytelling. We've just talked about that so many times. Yeah. They can go back and do so many things. It's also the same way when he was revealing, so, re, reve, revealing himself as a villain, mm -hmm. and which it looked like Jake Gyllenhaal was having a blast oh, in that scene. Yes. Mm -hmm. Like, he was just, this is great, this is fun, I'm going to have the most fun. But they were going back. You know, you see the scene where... Stain is yelling at that guy who you know became yes. part of the team, and they just pull so much history. They have so much history to pull yeah. from because it's not just the Spider-Man movies. And when you make okay. that one, when you make one-off movies like that, you can't do it, and it's just not as deep. When you got a deep history like this, this that's fantastic. When when Quentin Beck is is just doing his uh, explaining his ultimate evil plan to all the people that are part of the Mysterio team. Can, can we just say that, that how great that was, how corny and absolutely beautiful at the same time. It was a total was. comic book villain revealing oh, himself. Oh, absolutely. They nailed it. If that's what they were looking to do. Oh, I think they were. I do and, too. and they yep. did it masterfully. I just, I love the fact that he is so full of himself that he's just applauding him and his team the entire <laughs> way. And, and you, who used to work for Tony Stark and were fired. And you, who was, <laughs> it was just great. <laughs> and now, the big question. Spider-Man, you know, save the day. Is Mysterio alive, or is he still living? Or is he holographically dead? <laughs> should we should we do a quick uh, quick vote? What do you think? I think he's alive. I think he's alive. Alive. Okay. And I think that leads into our mid credit scene, which was phenomenal, and oh, basically so phenomenal. You know, Spider-Man swinging around town with MJ. Finally, we get to see Spider-Man in New York. And the and this was not uh, this was not a mannequin this time. This was not a mannequin this time. <laughs> That's right, you know. And he kind of drops her off, and she's like, "I never want to do that again." And all of a sudden, that news report kind of comes on the giant TV, and we find out that some of the audio from that final battle, when he's talking about terminating the drones, Mysterio or you know whoever sent in the video mm -hmm. turned it around to sound like Spider Man, pretty much was the villain through that whole thing, and then to make. You know, compound the problem for Peter Parker. Peter. He outs him. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, classic deflection. <laughs> um, psychology 102. I don't know. Go ahead. <laughs> All right. So I, um, I really love, uh, I love who showed up there in the in the very end in that uh, in that mid credits. Well, you can scene. say it. It's spoiler. Yeah. So I love that we've got uh, 
J. J. Jonah Jameson back. <laughs> um, once again, we're bringing things kind of up to date. Nobody reads newspapers anymore. How else were they going to get the Daily Bugle than to make it sort of an Alex Jones-esque uh, video show where he's throwing out conspiracy theories about Spider-Man. So Keith brought this up in our theory video, and good job on on calling this. You called yeah. this well. It was it video. Was, it was yeah. idiot savant. <laughs> we were joking. And, it, and then we, we called should, it was actually going to be him. Yeah. We yeah. should use this power for good. <laughs> because great power movie? does come with great killing James. Rest in peace, James. And you know, <laughs> one of the things I also thought about, it's so great that J.K. Simmons is back. Because one, he is the greatest J. Jonah Jameson. Oh, yes. I don't think anyone could replace him. So, I, And I think uh, I think Marvel realized that. I think Disney realized that. Sony, whoever, they all knew, like, there's you cannot replace J.K. Simmons. He, it, he has basically become J. Jonah Jameson in the live action movies. Mm -hmm. But that also opens the door for past actors in certain roles in Marvel. So maybe it does. Charlie Cox comes back as Daredevil. And I, I say that because one more thing I just want to point out. Mm -hmm. Now that he's been outed and he thinks he's a villain, does he need a lawyer? Ooh. And who will he get to represent him? Perhaps Matt Murdock? Could be. Will he show up in Spider-Man 3, that two-year gap after so Daredevil was canceled? What you're over? saying is we're going to get Ben Affleck's Daredevil back. <laughs> Wonderful. I can't wait for it. You heard it here first, folks. I don't know. And I'm, uh, same series. There's no way, like, if they bring... Uh, I'm starting to sound like walking. If they, if they bring Wilson Fisk into the MCU, there's no one else that can play him. That yep. And Doug talked there. about that in our theories video. Mm -hmm. You know, he thinks the tower is going to be bought by Wilson Fisk, a.k.a. the Kingpin, which would be amazing. But did you notice in that scene, when he is at the base of Old Avengers Tower, there's like a thing lining up. It's, it's saying, like, we can't wait to show you, and it has a one, two, three, and then a question mark. And I'm no, like... because it was, it was moving so fast. I did not... You know, I do want to go back and watch it again. I did not see that. Look for it. When he's standing there, I saw it, and I'm like... Okay, now this is classic Marvel. Is it there? So everyone now thinks it's going to be the Fantastic Four. They're going to turn us into the Baxter One, building? two, three, oh, four. Yep, yep. Or okay. did they just put that there so people would speculate? I know Marvel puts things they in their movies. Love, they love when their fans uh, speculate, and um, obviously they are watching this video right now, and they want to see what of we course. think about it, too. And all their millions of followers are following us as well. Oh. Yes. Well, they're obviously listening to us because they put J.K. Simmons right. in his... Thing. After they filmed it, we yeah. mentioned it, and then they dropped it in there. Well, then, another thing, too, another famous lawyer in the Marvel comics is Jennifer Walters, a.k.a. She-Hulk. And there's been rumors that there's going to be a Disney Plus series with uh, Banner, Mark Ruffalo, and the She-Hulk. And that's going to how they introduce She-Hulk into mm -hmm. the MCU, and that could lead her into being in Spider-Man 3 also, which Daredevil, She-Hulk, I don't care, anyone could be in Spider-Man 3. One of the one of my favorite comics growing up was Marvel Team-Up, where it was always Spider-Man and another superhero. And it almost seems like they're doing that right now in the MCU because we had Spider-Man and Iron Man in Homecoming, mm -hmm. and now we had Spider-Man and Talos, a.k.a. Nick Fury. And this one, if they continue that trend and maybe Kraven's Last Hunt, or whatever three is going to be, will be Spider-Man Daredevil or Spider-Man She-Hulk or, or anybody. Right. They keep kind of sprinkling in these bonus heroes to make it more Marvel team. Spider-Man Deadpool. True. I wish I don't they see it happening. They won't do but it, I but wish. they should. Yeah. So, one thing that I was going to say, uh, okay, I did not like the fact that Peter's identity was revealed to the entire world. I I kind of wish that they would have let, because Mary Jane, uh, not, Mary, not Mary Jane, MJ, Michelle, Thank you. Um, <laughs> she uh, she discovered partway through the movie, and they showed this in the trailers, what his identity was. And I kind of wish that they would have kind of let that play out a little bit longer, at least for another film. Um, sort of let him keep his uh, secret identity, because that's something that has always been so important to the Spider-Man character, is that he's always so concerned about somebody finding out what his secret identity is and hurting the people that he loves. And we saw it happen in some of the most famous Spider-Man comics, where... Um, you know, some of the, the women in his life were killed by his uh, by his enemies because they found out who he was. And so I kind of wish they hadn't revealed it. I get why they did, though. I understand that how many of the Avengers 
right now have a secret identity. None. None. Exactly. Because in, in this updated world, we've mentioned that a couple of times now in this video, that uh, everything has kind of been brought up to date with the, the sort of technology that Mysterio uses. Everybody has smartphones. Everybody has computers. How easy was it for MJ to figure out exactly who Peter was? Wouldn't everybody else be able to, too? So I get why they yeah. kind of had to... I mean, it, no, there's no. almost no excuse for him to have it's, a scene. And, and think back to Homecoming's post credit scene when Matt Gargan, a.k.a. Scorpion, who hasn't gotten his suit or his powers yet, is yeah. talking to Michael Keaton or, you know... In prison. Yeah, yeah. And he says, yeah, do you, we heard, uh, you know, you know who he is. And he said, if I knew who he was, he'd already be dead. Well... Is that going to bring now Vulture or Scorpion into you know the third movie now? Because that obviously they want revenge on Spider-Man. Less Vulture, more Scorpion. So maybe Scorpion will be the main villain in Spider-Man 3 Could because be. he has a vendetta against Peter Parker and Spider-Man. Which would be the perfect way to bring Kingpin in since he was, in the comics, someone who designed Scorpion's suit. Yep. Just don't Pain. try and do all that and then throw like Rhino in there too. You know what I mean? Don't over egg the pudding. You mean the best rhino from Spider Man 2? Paul Giamatti? Amazing. Yes, absolutely. They do bring back old actors now. <laughs> we make it Paul Giamatti as Boom. rhino. <laughs> we called it here first, folks. Paul Giamatti, next movie, rhino, he's coming back. All right. Well, let's get to that last credit scene that we were talking about, uh, Nick Fury, earlier. So we're, we're talking about the whole, I think Keith already uh, spoiled it. Earlier, but <laughs> well, hopefully you saw the movie. And I didn't yeah. spoil it. But I didn't. Talk I haven't about seen it. the movie yet. Oh guys. man! So the whole movie, we, we were Doug, we're talking about how off he is, and then you find out he's been on a scroll ship. We already went, went over that. But how long has he been there? Who's he been there with? Is Good question. Your Mariah Hill question. Maria. Maria. Maria Hill. Sorry. Maria okay. Hill question. I am not convinced that there even is a human Maria Hill. I don't think there is, because as we uh, end up finding out. The reason why Nick Fury seemed off to us, he's a scroll. He's been a scroll at least for all of this movie, and we think that he might have been, uh, it might have been scroll Nick Fury in a couple of other movies too. We were thinking perhaps Ultron. Uh, and this is going back to how he described himself in uh, Captain Marvel. And we've talked about this in some of our other videos as well. But yeah, I don't think that there's ever been a human Maria Hill. I think it's always been a scroll. Might not have always been Talos' wife, but. But, and we talked, I didn't buy into this, we were talking before the video, and I think Doug has convinced me, because Captain Marvel took place in the 90s, mm -hmm. they obviously could have left a scroll on Earth that Nick Fury wanted to work with, to the and time. they just created yeah. the persona of Maria Hill. Yeah, because they've and never really, like we were saying, we ne she never really had a backstory, she was just kind of exactly. there. When She's she just always been there. She's yeah. always been like, uh, uh, you know, Nick Fury's right-hand person. Mm -hmm. And she was there when Nick Fury faked his own death in Winter Soldier, then yep. the scroll for impersonating Maria Hill help him shut his body down so it seemed like he was dead. I mean, so much to talk about with this and so many things that could be happening. If you have your thoughts, well, post them below. There's one more thing, and I, I, I talked about it in the one, because I unfortunately I did not get to see it with these gentlemen. I was on a family vacation, but when I saw it, there was an offhanded comment by Talos and Soren in the guise of Maria Hill and Thing where they're talking about Kree sleeper cells on Earth. Okay. And it got me thinking. I'm like, okay, are they sort of almost reverse secret invasioning the MCU? So instead of the scrolls, it's, it's actually the Kree. Kree. Oh, that's interesting. The that is interesting. scrolls are working with Earth and Nick Fury. And the Kree are the ones secret because we know that they can be pink skinned and look like humans, True. so they don't have to shape shift. They're just sending their more human looking Kree to infiltrate the earth. That would be interesting. I, I'd like to see that. And uh, one last thing about this about this after credit scene um, that we were kind of uh, discussing before: the spaceship, the space station that they're in, is this sword? Is uh, this the sword station that's going to kind of project us into the next phase of the MCU where they're taking on more intergalactic missions? You know, it definitely could be. And These it could be questions. if we are getting secret invasion at some point, and mm -hmm. it being the Kree instead of the scrolls, sword is going to play a huge role in that. So introducing them in a post credit scene without really telling us and then building that out later oh, yeah. is definitely the way that they would go with it. It's genius. Yeah, it is. It really is. It's just saying it's there. They don't give too many details so because they can work that out later. Like the Thanos play. Well, then, <laughs> then you also have to think, is MCU kind of leading us down a fake 
avenue. It looks like the scrolls are working with us. They want us to believe they're working right. with us. Right, that was my other thought. But they're really the ones, because they don't have a home. They're really are the they ones. The ones they, you invading. think they're trying to take over Earth by working? Well, that could very and well be. And the Kree be. will be the ones who expose them, and we end up siding with the Kree. Because in the comics, we fought along Skrull, we fought along Kree. I say we, because, you know, I'm a superhero. Right. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, basically the Earthbound heroes have fought along each at different times for different reasons. When the need is good for the Kree to fight with us, they fight with us. When it's good for the Kree to fight against us, they fight against us. And I think the MCU is going to go down that path. It's very Loki. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and they may even do something where both the Kree and the Skrull are trying to take over Earth. And it's like a three-way, you know, battle. That would definitely be an Avengers-level threat that could work into the next Avengers movie coming at the end of, you know, Phase 4 or wherever it's going to come and be that main point. I don't think the MCU is... Yeah, sorry. The MCU has ever deceived us on, you know, what a character was going to be doing by the previews or by any setup. It's always been true to what... They uh, did in a, Infinity War. Obviously. They made us think that Hulk was going to be there. Right, this is obviously sarcasm. Okay, I was going <laughs> to say, I'm like, are you really? Because of Mysterio <laughs> on the commercials and Mysterio on the movies. And, and the I, scrolls for Captain Marvel. I fell for it. They were I'll admit exactly. Guys. I totally fell for it. I thought for sure Mysterio was, they were going to flip it around on us, and he was going to turn out to be a good guy. They tricked us into thinking that the Mandarin was the Mandarin. Oh, I'm still I hate bitter that. over one that. Shot. I'm waiting for that one shot to be continued somewhere. <laughs> You know, hopefully we do get the Mandarin in the MCU soon. I there did. has been rumors that he'll be in the Shang-Chi movie as his father, which would be awesome, but that's definitely for another video. But thanks, everyone, for watching, and we will talk to you soon. Smash that like button.